Stop making these movies, Hollywood. God, nobody wants to see another grudge movie. And it's so perfect too, because the movie starts with great foreshadowing. It literally starts with a scene of a pile of garbage. <laughs> Because that's what this movie is. That's what this franchise has turned into. It's hard to believe it now, but there was a time when haunted houses and ghosts that haunted you was fresh and new and interesting and fun. Nowadays, it's a joke. And in 2020, they released a new grudge movie. Wow. Nobody saw this coming because it's probably the worst idea I could possibly think of. Regurgitating the same shit we've seen a thousand times before. And not only in other franchises, like this is not only a tired topic already, but there have been 10 plus grudge movies. If you count the ones made in Japan and the ones made in the US, just stop it, let it die, Jesus Christ. The Grudge 2020 is a trite, vapid, uninspired pile of garbage. It's like Nicholas Pesci almost knew that this movie was garbage. That's why he started the movie off by showing the audience a pile of garbage. Because <laughs> he's like, whatever. I'm just going to phone it in. You know, it's money. I'll do it. Fuck it. <laughs> this movie was doomed to begin with. It was in development hell since 2011. When it was first announced, it was intended to be a reboot, like completely discarding The Grudge 3. This guy named Adam Green was supposed to direct the movie. He's the same guy that made a movie called Hatchet in 2006. But he dropped off because he wanted to focus on adapting a novel called Killer Pizza. I have no idea what Killer Pizza is, but you know if this guy's abandoning this film, that's probably not a good sign. This movie received an F cinema score. The worst possible score which is super rare already. Only 20 other feature films have ever received an F. <laughs> this movie is such a joke. What are you doing, Nicholas Pesci? Are you that desperate for money? He wrote and directed another film called Piercing, which I thought was pretty decent. It wasn't an amazing film, but it was something. At least it was original. Hollywood is so desperate to continue rebooting all these franchises. You tried it with The Ring and it was awful. Now you did this. Just stop. Make original movies, please. Like The Witch, The Lighthouse, Hereditary. All those movies are so good. As if this movie wasn't damned to fail already. This was the first grudge film that didn't have any involvement with the original creator, Takashi Shimizu, who directed the original four Juon films and the two American remakes. If he lost interest in his own creation, then what the hell was everyone else thinking? <laughs> What the fuck? Before I jump into The Grudge 2020, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the movie that was released in 2004, the original Grudge American remake. When I saw this movie, I was pretty young, so I think I enjoyed it more than I should have. I watched it now, and it doesn't hold up very well. It's honestly not very scary at all. The ghosts are cheesy, the scares are cliche and awkward, but let's not forget that back in 2004, this was something that was interesting. And the movie isn't all bad. There's strong character setup. The movie starts with a suicide in the very beginning without any context, so it grips the audience right away. I like that the ghosts aren't obviously ghosts in the very beginning. The protagonist finds a boy in a closet and he's very strange, but it isn't readily apparent to the audience that this is a ghost. I think this movie was such a success because the audience wasn't sure what was going to happen. It's just laughable that they made another one because these movies lose all of their intrigue when you go in knowing exactly what's gonna happen. Most people know the basic rundown of the grudge by now, so it's hard to surprise the audience. It's the same with the Saw series. As the movies went on and on, they got worse. It's almost as if all these movies are like like a quick cash grab. Put respect on horror's name again, please. Put some respect on my name. And they weren't even trying with this new movie. I mean, maybe the actors were trying, but nobody else did. Everything else in this movie is awful. This movie even has the same exact scares from the 2004 movie. They both have the same bathtub scene. They both have a security camera scene. They both have the touching the hair in the shower scene. They both have scenes where the protagonist is in a haunted house and sees a flashback that occurs there. They both use gasoline and a lighter to burn down the house at the end. They both end with the protagonist dying to a ghost. So, uh, what the hell? <laughs> what? It's absurd. Like, yeah, some of the characters are different, you know? They have different occupations, right? Like, the protagonist in the new one is a police officer. Cool. <laughs> 
<laughs> Fuck off. You know how in a lot of horror movies they'll color correct to make it creepy looking and a lot of the time it's really effective? In this movie, it just makes it look like shit. The lighting is terrible in some scenes. There's way too much shadow in other scenes. It's super dark and super ugly. There were a couple shots here and there where I'm like, okay, this was fine. But for the majority of the film, I was like, ew, ew, what? Later in the movie, uh, the main character, the girl cop, enters the home of this old lady and she enters without anyone answering the door. Like she doesn't have any cause to enter, but she just does. Like, yeah, she hears someone crying, but they could be crying for a million different reasons. That's not a good cause to enter someone's home without permission. <laughs> so then she finds the old lady and she has blood all over her, but she doesn't question her about the blood. And then the lady like approaches her and the cop's like, oh, this is normal. I'm just gonna stick around. <laughs> William, he always used to be me. William was your husband? This is fine. I'm okay with the events that are unfolding currently. Ma'am, are you alone in the house right now? She didn't question her about the blood all over her? Like, that's kind of a good indicator that something's going on. So then this cop lady sees ghosts while she's driving. That's kind of weird, right? Anybody would be scared to death by that, and they would probably mention it to someone right away. I mean, you probably don't want to come across as crazy, but she meets this detective guy right after this, and it's like it just never happened. She's fine. You know, they just have a regular conversation. Um, okay. No, yeah, well, I don't buy that. And this movie constantly jumps around, and it's not seamless at all. It's very jarring. It's like, oh, it's 2005, 2004 now, now it's 2000, whatever. Okay, uh, stop! What? Ah! There's a scene of the realtor talking to this creepy ghost girl in the house. And then all of a sudden, it just randomly cuts back to current day with the cop girl. So that was very badly edited. Whoever edited this movie, who are you? The structure of this movie is terrible. Later on in the movie, this ghost forces the cop's head underwater and like holds her there, but then like just lets her go, you know, lets her live. I thought they wanted to kill these people, but I guess not. They just want to torture you a little bit. You know, these ghosts are really mean. They exist to torment people. <laughs> oh, and her dog's name is Frank. I just thought I'd mention that. <laughs> I always think it's so weird when people name their dogs like a human name, like Bill <laughs> or Bob. <laughs> come here, come here, Bob. <laughs> so there's this mentally deranged cop that was affected by the ghost in the past and he's in a psych ward. He hardly moves, but he can pronounce words perfectly. This is never gonna end. What? Come on now. There's a scene later on when Harold is being attacked by the ghost and he hides in a closet. Somehow the ghosts just don't know he's in there. <laughs> I hate this shit. They're ghosts. What, they just can't find him with their eyeballs? What are they walking around? They can hear and see. They have the same senses as humans. They don't know that he's in the closet. <laughs> oh, so dumb. And this whole ghost hovering over someone who's in bed thing has been overdone to death. Is there a single original idea in this movie? Peekaboo! I don't think there is. And then later on, this crazy woman kills her husband with a fork. <laughs> what? with a fork and it doesn't even show a bunch of stab wounds it just shows the fork like in his neck so what she killed him by stabbing him once in the neck with a fork that's absurd do you know how hard it'd be to kill someone with a fork so this crazy woman is admitted into a mental facility but for whatever reason she's able to just roam around freely after murdering her husband what okay <laughs> whatever <laughs> The different shots are cut together terribly in this movie. It's honestly torture watching this. Maybe that's the reason they made it, right? It was the editing and the pacing and the structure. That's what was supposed to really haunt you. <laughs> so there's this hilarious scene later on where this cop lady is turning the light on and off in her kitchen. And then this fat, ridiculous looking ghost guy pops up. <laughs> And it's supposed to be scary, but it's so stupid looking. It's honestly just funny. It's hilarious, actually. Is this a comedy? I'm confused. Like, look at this guy. 
<laughs> There's nothing scary about him. At the end of the movie, when the cop's at the house and she gets a glimpse of what happened there, they keep playing the audio of this guy yelling over and over. It's like, <laughs> Like they're trying to be impactful and really play with your emotions in this scene, you know, really like make this powerful, but it just comes across like they're trying too hard, you know? Most of the acting in this movie is decent. I thought Andrea Riseborough was pretty good in the movie. I don't expect a lot from kid actors, okay? But whoever played her son is just not good. I mean, I know he's a kid, but still. He just did not sell the role very well. I would say most of this movie's flaws have to do with the editing, the color correction, the structure, all that was really bad. And I love how there's so many people who are affected by these ghosts in this movie, and they know where this ghost originates from. But she is the first person to think to burn down the house? What? That would be like the first thing I would do. Any logical person would think that. But for whatever reason, these people that were affected by it and knew about the ghosts decided to do nothing about it. They were like, oh, well, it'll go away eventually. And even when it didn't go away, they just accepted that they were just going insane. I hate these movies, right? Where like everybody else who's affected by something are like, oh, woe is me. My life sucks. I'm not going to do anything to solve it. But then the main character comes along and they decide to solve it. And it's not like it's a complicated thing to do, right? It's not like The Ring where there's all these clues and mysteries. You have to like find out all this obscure stuff to fix the problem. No, all they do is burn down the house. And this movie has this really stupid abrupt ending. Like she gets attacked by the ghost and then the credits roll as they just show the house. That's it then. <laughs> that was worth it. And where did Frank go? Her dog? Where did Frank go? I don't know. He just He's just gone now, I guess. Maybe she got rid of him. Fuck Frank, right? So overall, how many effective scares were in this movie? Zero. Pretty good horror movie, guys. <laughs> it really doesn't get worse than this. If I had to give any credit, some of the actors did a good job here and there. There's also this like on the nose reference that they put in, which I thought I should mention. The house's number in the film is 44, which is a reference to the original Japanese Juon short film, Four 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 four. That's actually the name of the movie. It was made in 1998. Four is a bad luck number in Japan. It's kind of like 13 in the States. So yeah, this movie was a very terrible idea. I don't know why they made it. The Grudge 3 in America already underperformed. And that was back when these movies were a little bit fresh. So why the fuck did they think this movie would do well? I get maybe doing a remake in like... 2030? Like, give it some time for this movie to die completely so people forget it exists entirely and then maybe think about making an original spin-off of it. Why did they announce this film in 2011? Whose ever idea this was? They're so stupid! Like, I get that the original movies were a big hit and they made a lot of money, but why would you ever think like, oh, it'll just keep making money, it made money once. Who are the dumbasses behind this movie? Let's just do the same thing over and over and over and over and over. You know what? Fuck it. Let's make another grudge movie. In 2025, I want to see another grudge movie. And I want to see the exact same scares. <laughs> that's what I want. Give it to me, Hollywood. So yeah, guys, that's going to do it for me. Um, if you have any movie suggestions that you'd like me to cover, leave them in the comments down below. This video is sponsored by myself. Go to AlienClothing.com if you want some really cool clothes. There's a bunch of really awesome designs over there that I think you might like. So yeah, that'll do it for me. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Hello? Haro? Hibachi Benihana Teriyaki. Nagasaki, Okinawa, Hokkaido, Yokohama. Karate Judo Sumo Samurai. Nissan, Honda, Mitsubishi, Shibu. Harikari Tsunami, Kamikaze Banzai. Yamaha, Nikon, Casio, Iwa, Minota, Hitachi, Seiko, Toshiba, Buddha, Shitake Kimono, Tempura, Sushi, Sashimi, Fujitsu!